Welcome to Probability and Statistics. Uh, in this lecture video 4.3, we're going to talk about multiplication rules for probability. And I'm going to also show you how to um, do the counting thing I've been mentioning in previous videos. All right. <clears throat> Before we talk about the multiplication rule, let's take a look at the idea of independent and dependent events. So if I got two events, E and F again, and E and F are independent. That means if the probability of the first event does not affect the probability of second event. That's called independence. <clears throat> the first event does not affect the second event. So if two events are dependent, okay, that means probability of the first event occurring does affect the probability of the second event. So here we have independent dependent events. In lecture video 4.2, we have something called two events are disjoint or not disjoint, or the word mutually exclusive. All right, so there's a difference between uh, these wordings. So for multiplication rule of independent events, it says probability of the first event and the second event occurring will just be probability of the first event times probability of second event. So in probability, the word and means multiply. The word or means we will add. All right. So let's determine whether the following events are independent. So let's say studying for the math exam, that's one event. Making A on your math exam is a second event. So are these two events dependent or independent? And the answer will be dependent. Okay. Because making A on your exam depends on whether you study for the exam or not. Okay. So the two, you know, so the first event is the math e study for the math exam. Okay. The second event here seems like making an A. So one does you know study does affect you getting a or not all right let's try another one jeff goes out to eat for dinner kathy wins the state lottery uh what does jeff going out to eat got to, got something to do with kathy wins the state lottery so these two events are independent from each other what's the chance jeff go out to eat got to do with the chance of kathy wins state lottery so these two events are independent from each other. All right. A uh, while back, we talked about the word with replacement and without replacement. Okay. So if I want to draw draw a car, and then draw another car, the two events will be drawing an ace and draw another ace. Okay. Without replacement means once I draw an ace, I put. I put my car back in the deck. Then I will draw another ace. So without replacement, okay, these two events becomes independent. All right, because the second draw, the probability of the first event does not affect the probability of the second event of occurring. Because if you think about it. How many ways I can draw an ace on the first draw? There are there should be four ways to draw an ace out of 52. All right. Now I put my one card that I drew back into the deck. So when it comes to the second draw, I I still have the same four way to draw an ace out of 52. Okay. With the word and in the middle, then we will multiply. Okay. Excuse me. Ah, without replacement. Sorry, 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 sorry. This with replacement. Sorry, I, I did it the other way around. With replacement, so I put a car back. Without replacement will be dependent. Without replacement will be dependent. So that means my first draw, four ways to choose an ace out of 52. Alright, without replacement means I do not put the card back. So that means when it comes to my second draw, that means there should only end up with three ways to draw an ace out of 51 
possible outcome. So there should only be 51 cards left in the deck. With the word N again, we will multiply. So, like I mentioned before, without and with replacement does affect the probability a little bit. Alright. So, dependent event. This is a dependent event. Dependent event, okay, is also, you know, can be described using what we call the conditional probability. Conditional probability will occur if the probability of one event affects probability of another event. Okay, two events that are dependent, they become what we so-called the conditional probability. And, no, and the notation probability of F slash E, this thing reads as the probability of event F occurring on the condition on the condition such that event E has already occurred. Okay, remember E is the first event, F is the second event. So the probability of the second event given that the first event already occurred. Okay, that's what conditional probability means. So uh, this might not be a very good example. Um, getting pulled over, okay, probability of getting pulled over, probability of getting a ticket. Okay, so if you really think about it, getting a ticket got to be the second event. Getting pulled over got to be the first event. So if we just talk about these two things, what's probability of getting pulled over and getting a ticket? Okay, so that means probability of getting a ticket. So this thing is a dependent event because the probability of getting a ticket. Given that first event already occurred, which is probability of what getting pulled over. Okay, so if we only talk about these two things, I know you can actually get a ticket without getting pulled over because the camera systems um, some street has. All right, so getting a ticket is a second event. Given that first event already occurred, that's called a conditional probability. Alright, so multiplication rule for dependent events. For E and F to occur, we can say it as probability of the first event times probability of the second event given the first event already occurred. Or we can say it as probability of the second event times probability of the first event given the second event occurred. Okay, another way of looking at it, to find the probability of the second event given the first already occurred, that will be probability it's just manipulating the formula up here to end up with this this one probability of first and the second event occurred divided by probability of the first event because the first event always going to be the first thing happening okay and this problem want me to find the probability of second event all right so when we run into chance we will use the formula most of the time um, I show students how to do this just by you know thinking about it a little bit <coughs> All right, let's give this a try. These problems look just like the pizza and other one we done on the preview, previous video. It's just the question itself is changing a little bit. So, Mr. Connor's business class has 106 students, okay? So we classify them into genders and the year of study. The question is, what is the probability that Mr. Connor selects a female selects a female given that he choose randomly from only the sophomore so the sophomore is already occurred so that's the first event female is the second event and that's what this problem wants so this problem is asking, what's the probability of selecting a female given that it's a sophomore? Okay. What's the probability of selecting a female given that it's a sophomore? So sophomore is the first event. So here are the sophomore. Okay. Give, you know. And I want to select a female 
right here. So this this thing, you know, you see me using blue, but when I highlight it, it's a green. So this is the what? This one right here is is the common outcome, okay, between the two events. But right now we are given we are dealing with conditional probability. So my answer got to be five out of oh this is here's the difference. What's my denominator referring to? My denominator got to be referring to probability of selecting a female given it's a sophomore. So that will be probability of being a sophomore and female given that the probability of what? E. My first event E is referring to sophomore. And how many sophomore do I have? 18 plus 5, 23. There you go. Okay. So, big difference between the wording and versus or. Alright. Alright, let's, let's do the same thing. Look at the same table, look at it differently. Reverse. What is the probability? A selects a sophomore given that he already choose a female so this time the sophomore is the second event first event is female so probability of selecting a sophomore given that is a female Okay, so let's take a look at my first event, which is female. These are female. Sophomore, female, given that is a sophomore. And sophomore go this way. Alright, so this one it got to be Alright The five female because remember what the formula says it gotta be the you gotta be E and F on top divided by probability of the first event and the first event is being a female. So being a fe being a sophomore and a female is five students out of probability of the first event which is female and female is all the way down here 10 plus 5 plus 16 plus 19 is 50 so that means there are a total 50 ways I can choose female 5 of them over 5 of them is the overlapping outcome so that would be 1 tenth. 10%. Okay, very strange, very very different way of looking at it. When you f when you reverse the same question, okay, what's in the denominator here changes dramatically. All right, female first, then sophomore. All right, so this a and part is both female and sophomore. But what you gotta divide this the second time here is all the females. Alright, conditional probability. Alright, this time I got a box containing five green marble, thirteen white marbles. If the first marble chosen was white marble, what is the probability of choosing without replacement an other white marble? So I'm gonna end up drawing two of them. And this time is without replacement. Okay. So, my first marble chosen was a white marble. Okay. So, that would be 13 ways to choose a white marble out of my total possible outcome 18. All right. 
right? What's the probability of choosing without replacement on other white marble? And this problem here is tricky because this problem does not say, it does not say choosing a white marble and another white marble. So I was wrong by saying this is cho 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 you know, choosing two things. It's kind of like choosing two things, but it's the second thing they are asking. It's about the second draw. What's the chance drawing on other white marble? So without replacement means after the first time. The second time without replacement, there should only be 12 white marble to choose from on a possible outcome. 17. Okay, so this is the answer. Alright, this problem does not ask in the probability what's the chance of drawing a white marble and a white marble. It just wants you to find the second, the, the probability of the second one only. Alright, so there are some problems where we will actually find the probability of this one and that one. In this example, it just wants you to find the second one. Okay, be careful, be careful. Alright, two cards are drawn without replacement. What is probability of choosing a jack? See that word and right here? And then, without replacement, a queen. Okay. So this problem is asking what's the probability of choosing a jack and a queen? Without replacement. Alright, so does choosing a queen okay depends on what jack is and it does it's a conditional probability because the without replacement part of it. So first draw was the probability of choosing a jack. Well there should be four ways to choose a jack out of fifty two cards to choose from and then means times without replacement a queen so if once I drew that jack I'm not gonna put it back okay and then choosing a queen well choosing a queen choosing a queen hmm how many queen can I choose from It should be four queen to choose from, not three. Okay, it should be four queen to choose from, not three, because jack and three, I mean jack and queen, has no common outcome. So, so when I, if I did pick a jack from the first draw, none of those, that jack can never be the queen. But since it's without replacement that means my probability of choosing a queen will be 4 out of 51 possible outcome now because there's one card already gone from the deck so 4 out of 52 times 4 out of 51 I'll convert back to a fraction 4 over 663 All right, or I can have a decimal answer which is if I round to 4 decimal play that would be 0 .0060 okay this is less than 0 .05 so this is extremely not likely to occur because this is an unusual event anything less than five percent or 0 0.05 is not likely this is 0 0.006 okay even way smaller all right let's say three cards are drawn with replacement this time most probability that the first card would be a heart second would be a red card what? What's a red card? Red card means heart, or it can be a um, diamond. And the third card will be six of hearts. Okay. 
So this is and. This is and. Right, this one is a bit trickier. Ability of drawing a heart first. And second card will be a red card. And the third, the third card will be six of hearts. with replacement so that means after the after the first draw I put a card back so that means all three events are independent from each other so all I'm gonna do is just multiply I'm not thinking about dependent event right now they're all independent so first one hearts drawing a heart that will be 13 ways out of 52 and means times second card gotta be red there should be 26 ways for me to draw red card because red cards are 13 hearts and uh, 13 diamonds out of 52 and I gotta draw six of hearts six of heart uh, six of heart is a suit six is a um, face value so there will only be one out of 52 there's only one way to choose that one there's only one six of hearts Thirteen on the fifty-two times uh, twenty-six on the fifty-two times one on the fifty-two. Okay, we're on to four decimal place. Point zero zero two four. Ooh, very very low probability. Zero zero two four. So this is about, if you move the decimal to the right two places, it's about 0.24%, okay, which is very unlikely to occur. Alright, so this one is, uh, this one is the same one as the earlier one, excuse me. I must, mis I must misplace a, a problem here. Where's my two cards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I messed up. This is an extra problem. Sorry about that. What did that one? All right. Suppose you like a. Suppose you keep a jar of change on your desk. Currently, the jar contains the following. What is the probability that you reach into the jar and randomly grab a dime, and then without replacement, an other dime? So what it's saying is. I reach in, draw a dime, take it out without replacement, put my hand back in there, draw another dime. Okay, so without replacement, that will make a conditional probability. So what's my chance of drawing a dime and a dime? Alrighty. So conditional probability, with the word and, we're going to multiply here. All right, how many ways I can draw a dime? 18 ways to draw a dime. My first, my first time reaching into the jar. All right, out of, what's my possible outcome? My total possible outcome, 18 plus 18 plus 28 plus 12. My total possible outcome, 76. Okay. <coughs> Without replacement, trying to draw another dime. So, the second time I do it without replacement, there should only be 17 dimes left out of, what, 75 to choose from, okay? So, let's multiply. 17, 18 out of 76 times 17 out of 75. 0.53. Six point five three seven around four decimal place. Okay, about a little over five percent. Okay, cutting close. Not likely to occur. All right.
This is a very interesting problem. We're going to approach this same problem like we did before with the marbles, green and white, and large and small, um, from the, like the previous lecture video. So out of 300 applicants for a job, 145 are male, and 51 are male and have a graduate degree. Oh Lord. What's the probability that a randomly chosen applicant has a graduate degree given that they are male? All right, so let's take care of my, my table first. Let's take care of the table first, okay? So let's take care of the table. All right. So let's see what's going on here. Okay. So what I got here is male. So if I got male, that means I got female. Okay, so let's say I got category male and female. And they said something about 51 male have a graduate degree. So here I can have a graduate degree. Mm, so the other the other categories, so why don't we just say not graduate degree? I don't know what it is, but it's saying not graduate degree. All right, pooping. So let's see what we got. Fifty-one are male. They have a graduate degree. Male graduate degree fifty-one. So right here in, th in this box, fifty-one. And there is something about one forty-five are male. So the total number male here. Okay, the total number of male here on the outside are 145. Alright, so if I subtract the two, 145 minus 51, give me 94. So that means there are 94 does not have a graduate degree. Okay, okay, okay. Well, there are 300 applicants, okay? There are 300 applicants, though. So, how do I figure that? 300 applicants. So, if I take the 300 applicant minus the 145 male, that means the rest of it are female. Now, I don't know if I need that or not, so I'm just going to have a 155 right here. I cannot figure it out. The graduate and not graduate for the female because the problem doesn't say anything about it. Alright, so let's see what the question was. What is the probability randomly chosen applicant has a graduate degree given that something already occurred? They are male. So, what is the probability of has a graduate degree given that it's a male. So male already occurred. So graduate degree given that it's a male. So let's look at male. First event, male. 145 male. Given that it has a graduate degree so this right here 94 is in green well I highlight it twice so that means we gotta be male and graduate degree 94 out of alright what do I divide the first event which is male 145 okay oh sorry I'm sorry Highlight the wrong number. I said the word graduate, I just highlighted non graduate. Yeah. Sorry about that. Graduate degree. <laughs> Having a graduate degree. 94 was not. So the answer is 51 out of 145. Alrighty. Alright, do the same thing, okay? Same problem, 
So I'm gonna steal the chalk right here. All uh, 300 applicants, 144 are male, 51 are male have a graduate degree. Okay. All right, let's see what's going on here. 144 are male. We have 94 applicants have a graduate degree. Oh, what does that mean? 94 has a graduate degree. So that means the total number of people have graduate degree is 94. So that means this 94 is actually the total of having graduate degree. And if I know the total number of people has graduate degree, I can actually figure out what my female is. Because earlier I had 155 here for the, all the female. So female here will be 90. 4 minus 51, which I got 43 female having a graduate degree. And, it, and I can figure out how many does not have a graduate degree too. So let's see what the problem wants. What is probably the randomly chosen applicant is male. So male is the second event. Given that, the applicant has a graduate degree. Alright, so this one is backwards probability of it's being a male given that it has a graduate degree um, so how many people are male and graduate degree 51 because if I will highlight my first event is having a graduate degree second event is being a male so the green one is 51 again. But this time my first event is having graduate degree which total ought to be 94. That's the number I divide. Okay. So that's my answer. Alright, let's try a couple more. All right. uh, again, this is another class, nutrition class this time. 66 students. Okay. What is the probability that a sophomore female and then a senior male are chosen at random? So see, and then, this word and means I'm chosen a sophomore and then a senior. Dependent or independent? of sophomore female and senior male express your answer in okay so again choosing two students at random Dependent or independent events. So, the, hmm, let's take a look. First event: sophomore, female. That's seven. And then I'm gonna pick a senior that is a male. Male senior four. So this got to be, I believe this is a dependent event because I'm choosing two people. Once I choose one, what would I pick them, throw them back into the 66 students? So this problem got to be dependent. That actually makes sense because my sophomore female is seven way to choose from all oh, the 66 originally and then the second student I choose you know once I choose somebody to do something in class that means the rest of the student is only gonna be 65 it's a conditional even though um, even though the two events are kind of independent from each other but the second person I pick still depends on 
the first event. The second event still does kind of affect, excuse me, does depend on what the first event is. But this time I will still have four senior males up here to choose from, but it's only on the 65 student that's left in the class. Okay, kind of strange when we mix it up these wording together, it does get a little bit of, you know, strange. Gotta think about the scenario, what's going on. So, 0 0.0065. Okay, a little bit mixture of, you know, yeah, the two events are dependent, but it's a conditional probability because the second person being selected does depend on first person steal, okay, in a way. Alright, that's why probability is, is difficult to understand from time to time. Let's do one more card question. All right, two cards are drawn without replacement, okay? So without replacement are dependent. Uh, what's the probability of choosing a black card for the second card? Drawn, so black card for the second card drawn. So this is the second event. If the first card drawn without replacement was a spade. So the problem is saying, what's the probability of drawing a black card, given that it was a spade already, it was a spade first, okay? Probably a black card given is a spade. So let's think about this. Spade. How many spades do I have? Uh, should be 13 spades. Okay, should be 13 spades. But the problem is to find a black card. Mm, first card drawn without replacement. So we gotta read this question. What's the probability of choosing a black card for the second card drawn? If the first card drawn without replacement was a spade. So I don't think this problem is saying what's the probability of drawing a second card as a black card given that it was a spade. I think it should be the other way around. I think this problem might be saying this card. Uh, this problem, we can actually interpret this problem by saying, what's the probability of drawing us? Uh, no, it can be. I'm thinking drawing a spade and then drawing a black card. I'm thinking more towards this way right now. If the first card drawn without replacement, Probably choosing a black card for the second card drawn. If the first card drawn without replacement was a spade. So let's take a look. What's the probability of drawing a black card? What's the probability of drawing a black card? Hang on one second. Okay. Uh, black card given was a spade first. So if I know it was a spade, it's kind of weird though. Spades are 13. Black cards. First event goes into denominator, but black card is black card twenty six. So this, this this problem doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Let's look from this way. But if I look at it from probability of spade in the black card, all right. So thirteen spades to choose from out of fifty two for my first 
without replacement and black card black card uh, probability of drawing a black card on the second draw so this should be 26 black card total but I already draw a spade from the first draw so that should be only 25 oh I get it I get it I get it alright I get it now I get it now so this problem is saying what's the chance to draw a black card which is 25 so I was right at the beginning here oh lord it's probably confusing when you read it alright what's the chance for me to draw a black card given that it was a spade alright because right now if I will continue with this black card is 25 given that the first card was a spade already so that means there should be only 51 to choose from so this part is actually what this question is asking so this is the same one as earlier okay so I'm not see a lot of times when we do condition probability we try to divide it by probability the first event but this time we actually divide it by we're actually thinking about second event how many cards are left so that's why this problem is kind of strange so this answer is the right answer for this problem so it's just the wording sometimes it does confuse Mr. Chen from time to time and I definitely you know I definitely know that for sure it confuses students as well so this problem after all is asking for the second second event what's the chance draw a black card normally drawing black card is 26 out of 52 but before I draw this black card for the second draw I already drew a spade so that would be the 13 out of 52 therefore my second draw would be 25 out of 51 because a spade I draw is also a black card that's why I make it 25 alright so sorry for the confusion sometimes some of this can be confusing from time to time now the last thing I want to show you here is the fundamental counting principle this is the way how we count alright and we can reflect back to other examples we've done in the previous videos fundamental counting principle says if task A can be performed in M number of ways all right and after task A is performed a second task B can be performed in n number of ways task A followed by task B so so I'm doing one task followed by the other one can be performing m times n number of ways so if I follow one after the other, okay, we will actually multiply. All right, check it out. I think this thing was back in 4.1. Tossing a coin eight times. How do I figure out the 256? Because if you think about it, though, I'm tossing a coin eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Each time I flip, there are two outcomes for the coin, heads or tails. So one task followed by the other. One task followed by the other. We will multiply. So that means I have eight twos being multiplied. So that will be 2 to the 8 power. And 2 to the 8 power. Oops, sorry. 2 raising to the 8 power. That'll be 256. That's how I get that number. Alright. I think there was another one. The tree diagram. What's that tree diagram? Right here. Recall this example I got. Start out with two extra toppings, then I'm gonna do meat and then dressing. So there's three tasks. Okay, that's three tasks. So the meat, I got two ways to choose meat. 
two way to choose excuse me two way to choose the topping two way to choose meat two way to choose the dressing one test followed by the other so two times two times two is eight that's why there are eight possible outcome here all right when I roll two dice that have a sum where's my two dice question excuse me bear with me for a moment I'm trying to find it do I have a 36 right here because if you really think about it though I'm rolling two dice right what each die has six ways to choose from one followed by the other so six times six 36 total possible outcome okay so so these you know these answer I had uh, in the previous lecture video I didn't tell you how I get those number and the way I get it is by what? This thing called the fundamental counting principle. Alright, so we multiply. We actually multiply. So let's say we're going to order a new home theater system that consists of TV. Oh, 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 oh. I got TV, surround sound system, and a DVD player. So I got three tasks. Now we can choose from eight different TVs at a store, okay, or whatever people you order from, 15 different types of surround sound, and 23 different types of DVD players. One test followed by the other. So how many different home theater system can you actually build? How many different combination of the, of the three things you can build? Okay, so that's eight times 15 times 23. 2,760 different ways, okay. All right, very interesting, especially like when you, you know, when you go out to eat, you know what I'm saying, how many different combo there is, you know what I'm saying, if you just lay out all the different, like, in the burger, fries, different type of burger, okay, different size of fries, you know, counting the chicken nuggets and all that, different drinks you can have, all right, if you multiply all those together, okay, all different category, all right, that will tell you how many ways, okay, you can have a combo. <clears throat> I love it when I go to um, a Mexican restaurant where they say, you know, they give you a list of things um, you can choose from for the entree and then, you know, the two combo or three com th uh, any three combo uh, and it's set at different price. It's very interesting how many you can choose from. All right, let's try this one. This is real easy. A value meal package. And this sub consists of drink, sandwich, and a bag of chips. Okay, all right, so I got, I'm gonna get a sandwich, bag of chips, and a drink, excuse me. All right, five types of drinks. Five types of drinks four types of sandwich and four types of chips so one task followed by the other how many different combinations do I have that would be eight all right so in this lecture video we talk about dependent independent conditional probabilities and we do some counting problem all right thank you for watching